Welcome to another video. So this video is a short one created for a specific purpose to answer a question. For a course we're going to present shortly, we listed dividers as important, something that we need to have. And the question comes up of what makes good dividers. And of course, the always difficult, where do I get them? So this is a short show and tell. It's easier to show than it is to tell video about what exactly we're talking about when we say dividers. So off we go. First, some context. For this course, we're going to be using the equilateral grid, the grid of uh, equilateral triangles. And this is the classic, which comes from this pattern on the left, the uh, flower pattern or a simple circle with six circles around it, propagating infinitely outwards. And we can draw it that way, but it makes kind of a mess with all the compass lines. We don't need them. What we need is the one on the right with the grid lines and the divisions. And that's most expeditiously created with dividers. We'll need a number of unit cells. For these patterns, we need some room for some of them to develop so you can see how the pattern is evolving. And each cell will need to be divided into 12 divisions. And that's actually a fairly economical layout, but we don't do it with a compass. In, in some cases, it'll be convenient to use the one on the left where I have seven complete cells. In some cases, we'll be using the one on the right with 19 cells. But the tool we're going to use will be the same in both cases. These are dividers, the classical dividers. And they are really defined by their function rather than their form. So these are also all dividers. And the thing which sets them apart from a compass is the points. So in a compass, you have a steel point and a marking point. In this case, you have steel points on both sides. And what that allows is some precision, which is not possible with a compass. So they're defined mostly by the points, secondarily by their use. They're not used quite the way a compass is used. Um, most of these classic dividers are set by friction, so they're one-handed instruments, and you set them strictly by friction. They need to be set fairly tight. The screw up at the top there adjusts the tension. And the function which they're de they were designed for was to transfer a distance or to step off a distance. We'll be using them for stepping off. So for setting them, um, somewhat easier to use are hairspring dividers. So if you look over on the left side, this leg is split and it's actually a spring. And it's adjusted by this very fine thumb screw. So this allows you to use your friction set to get very close within a half a millimeter or so, and then you set the last quarter or half a millimeter with the thumb screw. These are actually quite nice. They're a little difficult to find, but they're much easier to use. The classics. So to be most similar to your compass, which is usually set with a center wheel, this is also a pair of dividers, dedicated dividers. It only takes steel points. It can't take a pencil but it adjusts just like your compass with the center wheel. These are not particularly difficult to find. They'd have to be fine used. Uh, they're no longer made as a dedicated instrument. The more common way to do this is to take a regular pencil compass and put in a divider point. These are very tight. So if you have a very good set, you'll have this guy which is specifically intended to replace your pencil point to turn it into dividers. Sometimes it's just a straight leg, sometimes the fancier leg. You'll also need, when you convert your compass to dividers, to swap the ends of your needle, your steel point on your compass. Usually it has the shouldered point and a tapered divider point. You want the divider point for this purpose. You always want the shouldered point for drawing. So you need to flip that around as well and then you've converted your compass to dividers. You also want to make sure these are quite tight. These should be painful. Test it on the back of your thumb. They shouldn't draw blood, but they should be actually fairly painful. You want them quite sharp. And that allows you to use them accurately where you 
place on an index and then you touch on your circle and step without lifting your dividers. This actually makes them surprisingly more accurate than a compass doing the same job. And it's because you have an index point, usually your first line crossing, then you move to your next one. You push gently to make a mark on your circle and step to the next one, push gently. You push on the bottom, not on the top, because if you use your friction dividers and push on the top, you risk changing your setting. Then these leave very tiny marks. In practice, you'll usually need to go through and mark them. And then, of course, you can just convert your compass back to your pencil compass, and off you go. So that was a 4-inch. Most people have a 6-inch. And if you go look in the case when you bought your compass, there's usually this little pill. And this little magic pill usually has spare lead. And the other thing, I've already converted this one. The other thing that would be in there is a second steel point. And you can use that second steel point, again, shoulder and divider, reverse your drawing point, and you have a set of dividers. So you take it out of your pill, pop it in, and on this particular compass design, it has a positive stop. You can only push it in that far. This is actually very convenient because you don't want these to slip while you're using them. So you pop that in, get it nice and tight, and then again, if you were the, when you initially convert your compass, you're going to have to swap this one because this is also a double-ended needle in most compasses. A shouldered point for drawing, swap that around to the divider point. And you want them to be pretty much the same length. It will make it easier to step the compass. It will swing more naturally. And you tighten it and then check it. Push it on the paper, make sure it doesn't slip. And then this is used just like any other set of dividers, stepping off around the circle. And when you're done, you convert back to your pencil. The pencil side is always the removable side. And you flip around your steel point back to your shoulder point, and you're back ready to go. Most compasses that you bought in the last 15 or 20 years will have in that little pill a spare two millimeter, at least steel point, sometimes double ended point, specifically for this purpose. This compass, which I recommend uh, as a purchase for if you're starting out, has two steel points because in this case, the steel point that you use normally is smaller. So it has a smaller diameter divider point to go here two millimeter to go where the lead goes. So there's your little one, goes there. There's your big one, goes there. Same thing. It will vary a little bit by compass design. And usually whoever sold the compass will sell spare parts. Here's the uh, Hoff compass, and this is the same story. These have two different sizes. So it'll come with the two millimeter in the pill, and then you swap around the other one. If you don't have them with the compass you purchased, we have kind of a problem. You can buy them. Alvin sells them or uh, Echo Bra in Europe sells them. Uh, two millimeter points. I have, if you absolutely can't find one, you can contact me and I can probably find you one. But that's the story. Compass to Dividers. Hope to see you in January.